him sneaking around camp this morning about daylight. I'll bet I had to run him halfway to Colorado before I brought him down. He's a Kiowa. Yeah, he's one of Chief Satank's braves. He's a bragging about Chief Satank being camped out there in them hills. In that case, Mr. Randolph, might be a good idea to turn back till we see what he's up to. I know Satank, Mr. Lawton. If he really is after this train, he'll chase us clear back to Missouri. Your best bet is to move on. You letting him get away? Let him alone. I don't understand this, Mr. Randolph. Well, first off, we don't want Satang thinking we're hostile. Sam, get me a half a dozen old guns in a file. And get me a small keg of whiskey. Whiskey? And ask Mrs. Klassen if she'll give us that old music box of hers. Go on, move. All right, if you say so. If Satank is planning to attack this train, he'll hit us when we go through Cottonwood Draw tomorrow. But instead of camping, you move on tonight. Whatever you do, don't stop till you get to Laird's way station on the other side of the pass. Where's the file? Here it is. What are you figuring to do? I'm going to pay a little visit to say tank. See if I can make a bargain with him. And with these, I can make him promise to leave this train alone. You'd give guns to Indian? Yep. And again, no. You won't be able to fire them more than once. Maybe not that. If they do, they'll blow their heads off. Side tank's on the war path. What's to stop him from killing you on sight? I'm placing a lot of stock in a keg of whiskey. All right, Sam, pack the rest of the stuff. We'll be on our way. We? How'd I get drug into this? All right, I'll go alone then. Oh, no, you don't. If they're gonna lift your scalp, I want to peek under it to see what you've been using for brains. Remember what I said. Don't slow down till you get to the way station. String out! String out! Start playing that thing. I want Satang to think we're in a cheerful mood. Yeah, real cheerful. You know, it seems like I can smell an engine behind every rock. Got that old crawly feeling again. Did you ever try soap and water for that? of many wagon. There. That's right. We're going through Cottonwood Draw tomorrow. Tomorrow? Satang, no. I heard you were in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop by and pay you a little call. There is other reason you come, white man. Yes. With all that war paint on, you're not a hunting party. So I thought we could do some business. I brought you some presents, too. A 
thing for squaws and young ones. And maybe this is what you want. All yours, Satank. But you've got to do something for me. You've got to leave our train alone tomorrow. No powder. We forgot it. You know, forget. There'll be all the powder you want at the west end of Cottonwood Draw tomorrow after the train has gone through. Good gun. Good gun. <laughs> That's fine gun. Sam, let me have that spigot. This isn't big enough war party to attack a wagon train. Wonder where the rest of them are. I don't know. At least we know where Satank is. Brought something else along. Something for everyone. Step right up, gentlemen, and wash your dust off your tonsils. Well, we'll be seeing you. Let's get going, Kirby. Wait. You stay. Drink. Sam, as long as we're staying for the party, why don't you give us a tune? trains with a pass by now. Well, let's get out of here while we still got our hair. And whiskey's making sat hang me. He was bored, me. Right there. 
Wonder where all the wagons are. We must have beat them in. Don't worry, they'll be alone. Boy, I got ambush in my head. Well, have another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender and Jinus. We're drinking to the slickest little trick since Eve got horse traded into eating apples. Some men will do most anything for a price, won't they, Randolph? Even trade her on their own blood. Explain that. Maybe this will explain it. The Kiowas got the wagon train right square in the middle of the Cottonwood draw tonight. <laughs> they massacred every man, woman, and child, even down to this one. That's where the rest of the war party was. You're not the first scout to sell his soul for a white-hating, scout-crazy, savage-like... <laughs> Enough of a load for that one, boys. You the boss of this outfit? Yeah. O'Doyle is the name. I hear you need a scout. Well, we could use a man. How well do you know the Santa Fe trade? Well, I'll stack my experience against anyone. Oh, you will, huh? Maybe you can be our man. What's your name? Kirby, sir. How does it get great Irish name? And your last handle? Randolph. Randolph? Get out. Wagon boss around here. I am. I'm busy right now. That's all right. I can wait. Ain't no use to wait, Randolph. I figured to get where I'm going with my scalp, right where it is. Won't do me any good hanging in a teepee. Like them lot of settlers and their wives and their kids. Hey, Kirby! Hey, I think I got something. There's a feller down here at the Grove, a gent named Griswold. He's heading an express freight outfit bound for Santa Fe, and he's trying to hire a scout. Ah, uh, what's the use, Sam? But this is a Mexican outfit. Chances are they never even heard of us. They're ready to roll, and it seems like the scout they had hired gets himself in a scrap last night and winds up with a knife in his gizzard. Let's go. Find Mr. Griswold, Jess Griswold. What do you want to see him about? I heard he was fresh out of a scout. Figured maybe he could use another. Well, you figured wrong, so you can haul your freight and get out of here. Oye, vamos, vamos. I said haul your freight. I'm scouting this outfit myself. 
Like I said, I want to talk to Mr. Griswold. Not his wagon, boss. Mr. Griswold? Yeah? I heard you needed a new scout. I told him we didn't need one. I can scout for all of us. I appreciate your willingness, Mr. McLowry. Two jobs might be more than you can handle. Ever been to Santa Fe? Six times in the last three years. Why, he knows every doggone rock and the whole 600 miles of it by its first name. What's your name? Randolph. Kirby Randolph? Yes, ma'am, that's the name. Kirby Randolph. Sounds familiar. Seems to me I heard that... Everybody west of the Missouri has heard of Kirby Randolph. From what they say, we'd be better off with a loaf of wool for a scout. We haven't got any job for you, Mr. Randolph. Wait a minute. Toss sign this man on. Don't you understand? This is the man who was responsible for the Lawton massacre. Oh, yes, I remember now. Maybe Mr. Randolph has an explanation. I believe every man's entitled to one mistake. Jess, I'd like to talk to you, please. All right. Look, Jess, when we threw in together, your part of the bargain was to see me safely through to Santa Fe. That's right. Well, with a scout like Randolph guiding us, we'd be lucky to get through Cottonwood Draw with our hair on straight. I think he was telling the truth when he said that was his one mistake. In which case, he'll be on his medal not to repeat it. Scouts can't afford to make any mistakes. Neither can we. But we can't leave without a scout. And we can't stay around here with the cargo these pack animals are carrying. Well, it was a good try. I told you it wasn't any use. Just our luck to run into a slick, green-eyed female. Let's go. Randolph! I thought you wanted that job. Uh, I do. And get your gear. Gear? I, uh, I got it all right here. We want to see wagon dust as soon as possible. How about my friend, Sam Beekman? Now yeah, we can use him. Thanks. You know, we figured the boss of this outfit would be a Mexican. I live in Santa Fe. I'm heading home. Tuss, sign these two on at the regular pay. We'll move out immediately. If you have any instructions for Mr. McLowry now, go ahead. Detail men for point, swing, and drag duty. How many you got on night guard? Four. Double them. We won't be in any country for a couple of days, but we don't want to take any chances. Is that what you did for the Lawton party? That's enough of that Lawton business. I don't want to hear any more about it. I'll roll the wagons. As you can see, Mr. Randolph, our wagon boss is a bully. Yeah. Part Indian, ain't he? The mother was a Dakota Sioux. Mm -hmm. I can smell him a mile away. You don't like the Sioux? I don't like any Indians. I like half-breeds less. See if you can be some help around here. What are you doing here, sneaking around this wagon? I drive this wagon, Wasikan. We're not taking any squaws along on this train. Now make tracks, move, get out of here. Since when did you become captain of this train? What's the idea of a squaw tagging along? Listen, where I go, to walking goes. Now you make tracks. I'll take care of her, you take care of your scouting. Since Jess Griswold saw fit to hire you against my wishes, see if you can get us through Cottonwood Draw with our skins in one piece.
All clear now. That's Cottonwood Draw, Mr. Randolph. Are you sure? Sure as anyone can be in Indian country, but shake them up. I guess we'll get through all right, Mr. Randolph, seeing how you'll be right along with us. All right, move those wagons up. Get moving. Get those teams rolling. <laughs> Cut him loose. animals loaded this way? Most of them. But what concern it is of yours, I don't see. Hurry up with that pack. With 100 pounds of powder and maybe 20 rifles apiece, you could supply quite an army. That's what we plan. Who's we? Just Griswold and I. Half those guns are mine, and we intend to turn them over to the Mexican army. Mexicans, huh? It's all very legal, Mr. Randolph. They've offered to pay very well for them. Did you think I was running them to the Indians? That's where they'll end up when Satank finds out what you're packing. Is there any reason why he should? A blind squaw could spot him five miles away. I see. Well, in case you're thinking of blaming it on a blind squaw, perhaps I'd better warn you. Every man in this train is an experienced gunfighter. Maybe you better turn back right now. You are wrong about the Watsikan scout. You don't know what you're talking about. He is no traitor to his people. His eyes are as straight as the eagle and clear as a mountain stream. We'll be traveling again in a minute. Mr. Randolph, something I think you should know about. Such as? Such as this. I'm planning on marrying Miss St. Clair. Congratulations. Why tell me? Because you're a man. Because this is a long trek for men to be without women. I can't think of anybody I'd rather stay away from. We've only been out a week. She'll look different to you later on. Just thought I'd warn you. Mr. Griswold, for your information, I don't like threats. I don't like Miss St. Clair either. Satank's tribe. They sure mess up. And wild ones. And look at them run. They must have got a whiff of water. No water in this valley. They're being driven. Holy smokes.
those wagons. Make a barricade. What the devil do you think you're doing? There's a herd of wild horses being driven down the canyon. I give the orders around here, mister. And you better start giving them, or you're going to lose every pack animal you got. All right, bring back those three back wagons! Them Kiowas shouldn't give us no more trouble tonight. Hey, I made some fresh coffee. Good, I can use it. Here, give me a hand with it. Sure. I'll try trailing those horses for the morning. I might have run into something interesting. Not to change the subject, but how's the girl? She's all right. Boy, it sure was a close call. Great big hero, ain't you, boy? Shut up. You kind of like her, don't you? Why don't you get out there and stand guard? And all this slop? All right, all right, I'm a going. Doing back. Afraid you'll drown? It's raining outside. Uh, uh, Aren't you going to invite me in? Come in. Don't you take off your hat when a lady comes to visit you? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, now that you're dressed, aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Well, will you sit down? 
That uh, seems to be your favorite expression tonight. Yeah. You shouldn't be here. No place for you. Well, I came over to apologize. But thank you for what you did for me this afternoon. Apologize for what? For listening to strangers talk. You see, your friend Sam made me listen to the real reason of why you were blamed for the Lawton massacre. And you believed him? Yes. Now that I know you better. Well, that's good. Thanks. So now we're going to forget about it. I can't forget about it. Not as long as Satank's still alive. How about a cup of coffee? All right, if you'll have one. It's none of my business, but what's a girl like you doing running guns to Santa Fe? I told you. For money. I know, but all the danger, risking your life every day on the trail. This doesn't seem like a job for a lady. I've seen it rougher, and I'm not sure I'm a lady. You see, I was born on the frontier. Dragged around from one pistol-happy town to another by a... No good father who wasn't fit to touch my mother's hand. Sometimes he was a trapper, sometimes he was a miner. But mostly he was a thief and a drunkard. Nobody ever had anything good to say about the Sinclairs. That's not right. I shouldn't blame you for what you parted. When he died, he got killed in a gunfight. He left a sack of gold nuggets. He got them from a claim, or maybe he stole them, I don't know. But it was enough of a stake to buy the guns and throw in when Jess Griswold gave me the chance. It's all I've got in the world. It's my one chance to make enough money to really be somebody. It takes courage to do what you did. I'll give you that. I didn't know there was so much danger involved. Kind of sorry you had to get mixed up in it. Well, you did your best to keep me out of it. I, I wish you hadn't come. Do you? No. Boy, I'm wet clean up to my ankles. Pardon me. Why shouldn't I be? The sun is shining, the rain has stopped, and we didn't lose a single gun. It is not for the sun or the rain or the guns your heart is singing. It is for the young Wasikan scout. I'm afraid you're right. Wiser for you to listen to my warning. I'm not afraid of Jess Griswold. The fear is not for you. It is for the Wasikan scout. I wish you'd stop talking that teepee talk. If I say Wasikan in our tongue, white man, another one, the meaning is the same. Does he know what you are, the tall white scout? I told him about the bad St. Clair reputation. But did you tell him all the reason why you are not like? It doesn't make any difference. In Santa Fe, no one will care who I am or what I am. It will be a new start. He likes not our people. He makes it no secret. He hides not the hate he has in his heart for us. My father was a white man. And your mother a squaw. I 
I know. a bunch of Kiowas up at the Big Bend, holding a war party. How many? About 25 and a chief. What did the chief look like? Same as he always does. What do you mean? The chief, Mr. McClary, was Satang. Means we'll have to corral here. You mean without going underwater? I mean just that. If you roll this train, you're rolling against my report. Well, we're rolling it, Mr. Randolph, so get out of the way. Now, wait a minute, Tush. Randolph's right. We can't travel after dark with that tank prowling around. Now, what do you suggest? Tie down here and corral tight. Bring your animals in close. Double your guard. You heard him. Span out and corral. Yes. All right, span out, corral those way. Anything wrong? I haven't seen much of you since we left Westport. Well, there hasn't been much time. Sit down. I thought you might be nervous tonight, like my company for a while. Why should I be nervous? Not knowing what's out there in the darkness? I'm not afraid. Besides, I have to walk in with me. Santa Fe must seem years away to you now. Now the journey will soon be over. We'll get there. Santa Fe. I've thought of little else. As my wife, you'd have the respect, the security you've always wanted. Jess, aren't you taking an awful lot for granted? I don't think so. You must know I've loved you ever since I saw you in St. Louis. Yes, I know. That's something a man can't hide from a woman. So far, you've given no indication you don't love me. No, that I do. Look, Jess, I I'm grateful for this opportunity you've given me, but... We have lots of time. No need for an answer now. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess I'm just not thinking very clearly tonight. The excitement and... and I'm tired. Sleep well, then. Good night. Good night, Jess. Hey, Sam. Sam, where are you? You sleep? Just look this way, boy. 
Where you been? We got company. They mean coyotes out there. Get some sleep. I'll take over here. Well, what do you think you're doing? Well, I was only playing. I never expected... Don't ever sneak up on a man like a dirty, thieving Indian. Kirby, I had to talk to you. I could have killed you. I ought to tan your hide. I'm sorry. You do care, don't you? I always did. I guess I knew. Jess knows, too. That's what I had to talk to you about. Don't worry about Jess. I can take care of myself. Kirby, he's a dangerous man. Don't underestimate him. Yeah, I know. He warned me. Kirby. Kirby, there's something else. There's something else on my mind. On mine, too. Andale, Andale, Senor Griswold. Good morning, gentlemen. Are we all here? All well, set, Mr. Griswold. What's the idea of calling the symbol? The idea, Mr. McLowry, is that we have a traitor in camp. Last night, two men left their posts. One of them betrayed my trust. Here's your rifle, Mr. Randolph. he left. You too, Mr. McLowry. Sure, left the camp last night. I was out scouting them Kiowas. I wasn't gone more than half an hour at most. And what's your excuse, Mr. Randolph? I didn't leave camp last night. But you did leave your post. Oh, come now, Mr. Randolph. When I made the midnight checkup, you were not there. Maybe I did leave for a little while. Well, you no good traitor. I don't trust him. I never did. Neither do I. Did you see any Indians on your little scouting trip last night? Not a one. 
How about you, Mr. Randolph? I told you, I didn't leave camp. Well, gentlemen, one of you is lying. I'm satisfied that both of you left your post last night. And neither one of you had any business being where you were. I'm satisfied, too, that I know which one it is. Now, you're both armed. Well, your rifle is loaded, Mr. Randolph. I'm going to count slowly to three. Sometime during that count, you pick your own time. The man who feels he's the subject of this little talk had better use his rifle on me. Because when I finish the count, I'm going to shoot my man. One. Two. Three. Well, gentlemen, I'm disappointed. You're forcing me to shoot a man in cold blood. Because the guilty one is not only a traitor, he's a coward. Go ahead. Give it to him in the belly, Mr. Griswold. Dirty Siwash sure has it coming. Indeed he has. <laughs> Pack up. We want to roll in half an hour. Why'd you kill him? Chavez is not only an excellent servant, he's a loyal friend. He followed McLarry to Satank's camp last night and heard him make a deal. How come you included me in this brace? Oh, that. Just a matter of simple curiosity. I was wondering if your nerves are as good as your eyes advertise them to be. That kind of curiosity can get you killed. You're lucky it didn't just now. You're the lucky one. Maybe the next time you won't be. To get back to McLowry, Chavez heard him arrange with Satank to unload the pack animals and put the rifles in the first wagon to cross the river this morning. He intended to drive the second wagon, have it bogged down in the creek to hold up the rest of the train. Had to give the Indians a free hand to run off the wagon with the guns in it. That's about what you can expect from a half-breed. He was a fool. You make good buzzard bait. Wait a minute. Maybe we can use him for better than buzzard bait. Satank figures McClowry will be driving the second wagon and the guns will be in the first. The way I figured, it doesn't seem right to disappoint him. Set. You all right? I was ready when I got here. Roll the lead wagon. Hang on, Tyson. 
Dios. wagon ran them off. They must have thought it was full of guns like the others. Kirby. I thought I told you to stay out of here. Bring him to a wagon. Kirby, I'm sorry. Well, there's I... nothing wrong with running off a whole pack of Kiowas single-handed. Well, you sure got yourself all plumaged up. Right pretty top piece you got here. That's Satang scalp, or half of it anyway. Well, half or whole, he sure ain't gonna like it. This hurt. Sure it'll hurt. You Indians are good at hurting people. It's just a gall dang minute. <coughs> All right. Go ahead. I'm tough. <coughs> you need another drink. Tough as you thought. Mean looking little devil, ain't it? Yeah. Good luck, Harold Washington. Could have gone through your heart. Mm -hmm. Good luck, you can have it. No, I want it. For a keepsake. All right, you can have it. How about another drink? Good Madison. Flash heel, good now. Fire water belongs in the belly. That's where it belongs, right here. Yeah. We sure were lucky. Yeah. Sat tank wasn't so lucky. Hey, look out for that. I'm gonna hang it on my belt. Not for you, Wasikin. <clears throat> Taking his mongrel life. Oh, I did the best I could, squaw girl. Yeah. He real chief. Big man with his people. He not forget you take his hair in front of his braves. Well, I only took half of his hair, so he's only got half a squawk coming. Next time I'll get it all. Feel better now? I feel fine. Give me another drink. I feel better than I ever felt in my whole life. Kirby, why don't you quit talking and get some sleep? Mm -hmm. You're pretty. Aren't you gonna kiss me goodnight? Kirby. You 
You don't know what you're doing. You're drunk. You're still pretty. Get some sleep. That's a nice girl. Yes, of course. She's not for you. If you think you can stop me from marrying her, you're crazy. Would you marry a squaw? What are you talking about? Orly is a breed. What'd you say? No secret. Everyone knows her mother was the daughter of a Kiowa chief. You're a liar. Am I? Ask her. Oh, I thought you knew. She would have liked to share your lodge, light your pipe, make your moccasins. They're very clever at these things, the Kiowa squaws. They use porcupine quills on the moccasins, range them in very pretty patterns. All right, you said what you wanted to say. Now get out of here. I'm going to get drunk. Excellent idea. Nothing like whiskey for a broken heart. God, get out! What are you trying to find out? Eight days have passed since he caught the arrow, and he has not yet sought you. Why? He's been busy. He's had a lot to do since Jess made him trail boss. A man is never too busy to come to the teepee of the one who is in his heart. I know it's eating your heart, boy, and you're dead wrong. You know, the good book says, judge not that you be not judged. There ain't no sense in you squaring off at every engine you run up against just on account of one no good double dealing chief. Don't add up, Sam, and why don't you mind your own business? The trouble with you is, boy, you can't add. You want this wash water? Yeah, leave it. Thank you. Good evening, Sam. Evening, Miss Orley. May I come in? There doesn't seem to be any place to knock. What's wrong, Kirby? I've hardly seen you since the fight at the crossing. I've been busy. I know, but that's no reason for avoiding me. Something's happened between us. Tell me what it is. Nothing that'll do any good to talk about. Forget it. Oh, I almost forgot. I brought you a present. 
Go on, take it. It's a good luck charm. I made it myself from Satang's top knot and that arrowhead that you stopped. Pretty. You do real fancy work, you squaws. Who told you? Doesn't make any difference. Seems to make a great deal of difference. Yeah, I guess it does. I thought caring for each other the way we did that it wouldn't matter so much. Look, Arlie, I haven't got much to offer a woman but a rough life. But when I get married, I don't want my bride to be a Kiowa half-breed. moon in this part of the country. You're not the kind that cries for nothing. Something's hurt you. Was it you who told him? Would I do anything to hurt you? No. No, I don't think so. Then don't cry. He's not worth it. It's not his fault that I'm a half brick No, it's just the way he thinks. Forget about him. You can never be happy with him. You and I understand each other. I'm asking you again. Will you marry me? Oh. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I've been patient a long time. I know, I know, Jess. I'll let you know before we get to Santa Fe. Thank you, Jess. You have forget this, senor. La mujer siempre está indeciso. She will never marry you, senor. When we reach Santa Fe or ever. You're a pessimist, Chavez. She has room in her heart only for this scout, senor Randolph. When I kill him, she'll come to me. If you kill him, she will never marry you. Ah, uh, being a pessimist sometimes has its advantages, senor. There is a little matter between the scout, Satank, and the Arkansas River, see? We're 200 miles from the Arkansas. Said Tank has been sitting on our trail since sundown. Thought he'd given up and gone home. There was smoke against the sky just after Kirby went off duty. Oh, Said Tank has great love for these guns, senor. But he has no love at all for the senor Randolph. What are you suggesting? There is old say, a fair exchange. Is no robbery.
sometime today, we're going to hit the place where the Santa Fe Trail divides. Yeah. We're short of water. Heard there's a spring a few miles east of here that has water in it when everything else is dry. I know about it. Check on it. If it's worthwhile, we'll go that way. You're the boss. Day, senor. Que pasa? You know what passes, you crazy buzzard. Jess Griswold tosses my scalp in Set Tank's lap and gets safe passage. See? He's very smart for Senor Griswold, no? If he kill you himself, the young senorita no come to the hacienda. This way he get the gun and the senorita. I myself think of this plan. Satang, I think he changed plan. Now he has White Scout. Be good, get guns, too. But we make deal. No like him. Stink too much like dead buffalo. Tie him on horse. My braves, take you to our camp. They will see you die. Soon you pray to die fast, but will not be. You die slow, one piece at a time. Now I go get guns. Catch me white squaw, too. No, 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 I got. Your friend Kirby should have been back before this. Yeah. I wonder where Chavis is. I ain't seen him around all day. I'm to think of it, neither have I. Sam, I'm going to split up the train. Hmm? Huh? There's a pass through the mountains. It's too narrow for the wagons, but horses can make it. I'm going to leave you in charge of the train. I'll take the pack animals, Miss St. Clair and her squad, to the Mexican Customs Station on the other side of the mountains. I'll send you back some water. I don't know about splitting up the train, but we can sure use the water. I'll cut out the ponies that's packing guns.
Go on, you crazy buzzard. Tell Satank his friends are double crossing him. Get him back! Turn around! Jim! 
Jess, what are you doing? Get out of here. If that tank ever gets his hands on a girl like you. to walk should be. Where are you going? I'm going west. Then west is my direction, too. Do as I say. I won't have a squaw who won't take orders. Go on, move. split trails. With luck, we'll beat them back to the wagon train. Sam in the wagons yet? No wagon. Those wagons should be right in here someplace. Sergeant! 
Mustang. Busca a Randolph y Señorita Sinclair. Come on, fellas. Turn the pack horses loose and let's go. On delay, on delay. Horses are too tired to go much further. Yeah. We can't make any kind of a stand here. Kirby. If all this hadn't happened, would you have tied your pony out in front of my teepee? Like they do among my mother's people. I sure would, honey. I'd have gotten the Padre and Santa Fe to marry us and all. And it wouldn't have made any difference about my being in... I think. Take her up on the rocks. What good would that do, Kirby? Thou shalt be my daughter's husband. She was my mother. You know, Padre, it sure will be a load off my mind to get rid of these pesky guns. Where are these two young people who you said you wanted me to? Uh oh, we're too late. They done gone and went and done it. Done what, my son? Well, he's tied his pony in front of her teepee, and as soon as she finishes feeding it, they're hitched. Leastways, that's how it's done in the Kiowa country. Hey, hold everything! Not so fast, boy. We're gonna make this thing legal. Legal? 
Are you the best man? Well, you know, we never rightly settled that. 